Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Locum23. You're joining me for choices of stories you play. Freshman, book one, chapter 13, The Birthday Girl, part three. An hour later, you and your friends sit in the waiting room while nurses and doctors examine Caitlin. I can't believe this is happening. I know, everything was going fine. And then... This. I know. It's a good thing he found her, Chris. Otherwise... Someone would have noticed her, but yeah. I'm glad I found her when I did. Aw, baby. You were so brave. Uh, thanks, Becca. Hey, Becca. Thanks for coming with us. It means a lot. What the hell are you even doing here? Um... I... I guess thanks for coming with us? I know we've always been un not always seen eye to eye, but thank you. Hey, I care about Caitlyn too, but I'll let you all be alone with her. You're her favorite people, after all. Becca gets up and leaves and puts a hand on Chris's shoulder. See you later, babe. I'll take care of you? R right. See you later. Becca strides out of the hospital already whipping out her phone to update Madison. Good riddance. Come on, Abby. She's... She's not that bad. Keep telling yourself that, babe. Chris keeps at Abby, then starts laughing. You and your friends join in, feeling relieved at some of the tension. Goes out the room. Damn. I've missed your attitude. Oh, believe me, I've got plenty more where that came from. But I'll try to go easy on you for Caitlin's sake. Tyler stifles a laugh and catches Abby's eye, making her blush. Hell of a birthday, huh? How the rest of the night go? You two finally get together, or what? It's complicated. Oh, sorry, I just thought... Don't worry about it. While your friends talk, you find yourself staring at the closed door to Caitlin's room, on the ward. James walks over and sits down next to you. You've been pretty quiet. So have you? Listen, Mizumi. I'm sorry about what I said back there. I was out of line. No, James. You were honest, you were cruel. So that's where he was like, blah, 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 why'd you invite me? Mm. You were honest. I've been blaming Vasquez for ruining my life, but tonight I ruined everything all on my own. Don't be ridiculous. You're... Look, everything I said earlier, I just said it because I was hurt. I, don't, I actually do have feelings, funny enough. Could have fooled me. Look, Mizumi, I'm trying to apologize, okay? I'm sorry. None of this is your fault. Just stop beating yourself up over it. Okay, I'll, I'll try, James, but it's not easy. No, on the bright side, you've definitely got something emotionally powerful to write for about for Vasquez. That's not funny. Yeah, no. Just then, the door to open at Caitlin's opens. Chris hurries over to talk to the doctor. Is she okay? Can we see her? Chris and the doctor exchange a few words, and Chris walks back to your group. His expression only slightly relieved. What did the doctor say? She said Caitlin's gonna be fine, but they want to keep her overnight, just in case. Well, can we at least check it on her? She said no visitors. But we should be allowed to take her home tomorrow afternoon. Let's head back to the suite and get some rest. It's been a crazy night for all of us. By the way, James, thanks for your help, man. Of course. So Caitlin, she'll have a free latte waiting for her at the cafe when she's filling up to it. Okay, Zach? Will do. 
The following afternoon, you and your sweet mates return to the hospital to check in with the receptionist. A few minutes later, a nurse fetches Caitlin from her room on the overnight ward. She meets you in the waiting room, looking bashful, but healthy. Caitlin! Long time no see. Hey, guys! Caitlin walks over to you, biting her lip. The rest of your friends give you some space. Hi. What should I do? Hug Caitlin or kiss Caitlin? Kiss. You take Caitlin's hand and pull her down a hallway away from the rest of your friends. Where are we? Once you're alone, you turn to Caitlin and press her lips against hers, silencing her. She shivers and starts kissing you back. Finally, you pull away and stare into Caitlin's eyes, feeling tears welling in your own. It's okay, Mizumi. The doctor said I'm gonna be fine, but it's a good thing you got to me as so quickly. Otherwise, I don't even want to think about that. Last night was scary enough. I know, and I'm really sorry. I... I kind of lost myself for a while there. But it won't happen again. I promise. In fact, I'm thinking of taking a little break from drinking. Probably a good idea. Why do they insinuate about this? So I'm guessing she got, like, alcohol poisoning or something. Like, you know, her liver couldn't handle it all. So... Do you want to get out of here? These doctors definitely aren't as hot a, as TV as led me to believe. Caitlin gives a tired smile and nods. Let's go. Back at the suite, you and your friends help Caitlin through the door and head her and lead her to the couch. Guys, I can walk, you know. We know. We just, uh, we're so worried about you, that's all. Aw, Abby. You close the door and join the rest of your roommates on the couch with Caitlin, while Zach microwaves a bag of popcorn. I'd rather... <laughs> Can we just go to the cafe for the free latte, please? So, what's the plan? Horror, m horror movie marathon, duh! Shouldn't you be taking it easy? A oh, horror marathon sounds pretty stressful. Oh, Chris, piss off! Yeah, why don't we do something more relaxing? This is how I relax. Now that's scary. Before we start, can I just say the things are gonna be the. This is gonna be the best night ever. I need a blanket to hide behind. Can we maybe talk first, Caitlin? Alone? Oh. No, let's let's let her have her night. Um, let's go with the best night ever. I know, I love, love, love horror movies. Why? They're the worst? No, they're not. I enjoy them. I enjoy more paranormal type, horror-esque type things, though. But I'm all around a good horror movie buff. Yeah, can we take a vote on this? Suck it up, you two. You two can cuddle. Hey, it's kind of still my birthday. I make the rules. Fine. One and a half movies and three bowls of popcorn in. Tyler and Abby watch through their fingers while the cheerleader creeps through an empty locker room on the screen. Please don't go in there. Just go outside, call 911 or something. No, 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 no. Just then, Chris's phone rings, making <laughs> Tyler jump. Ah! Silence that thing, dude. It was giving me a heart attack. Sorry, sorry. It's Becca. I'd better take this. Should we pause the movie? Chris steps into the kitchen to talk to Becca without hearing Abby's question. Hey, Becca, what's up? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on my way. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got caught up. The roommates and I are watching a movie. Yeah, everyone's here. O okay, okay, I'll be there soon. Chris hangs up and sighs deeply. 
Sorry, guys. Becca needs me. I gotta go. Uh. Okay. Bye, Chris. See you all later. Feel better, okay, Caitlin? Yeah, sure. After Chris leaves, an awkward silence hangs over your group of friends. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Becca is the worst. Right? That was even more painful to watch than half of the kills in this movie! Well, we don't need Chris to have a good time, right? It was nice to have all of us together for once, but... We can have plenty of fun without Chris. It won't be quite the same without him. <laughs> we have to just Okay, um... We can have plenty of fun without Chris. That's a spirit, Mizumi! An hour later, you've woken up by the feeling of a blanket being laid over you. You open your eyes to see Abby, Tyler, and Zack all sound asleep on the couch. Caitlin shuts off the TV, leaving the room in darkness. Caitlin, you're still on? Hey, sleepyhead. You missed the ending. I think I can guess what happened. Are you going to bed now? Through the darkness, you see Caitlin hesitate in the hallway, leading to her room. Probably, unless you want to, like, stay up or something. You seem kind of tired, though. I'm pretty tired, but I wouldn't mind staying up late with you. But I could stay up... Mmm. But I could stay up and talk for a while. I wouldn't mind staying up late with you. Awesome! Let's go to my room. We'll let these three sleep. Sounds good to me. You and Caitlin leave Tyler, Abby, and Zach asleep on the couch and walk down the hall to your bedroom. You show Caitlin in your room and shut the door behind you. Caitlin walks over to your desk and picks up a framed photo. In the picture, your eight-year-old self holds a trophy up to the camera. Your, sp your smiling parents on either side. Aw, baby Mizumi. What's the trophy for? I got the trophy for Junior Gymnastics, the regional spelling bee, changing the subject. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna go with regional spelling bee. I think we did gymnastics in the normal playing through. I spent way too much time reading the dictionary when I was little. Caitlin glances over her shoulder at you, a playful smile over her lips. Ooh, smart and sexy. You're such a weirdo. Oh, you love it. Do you have any other pictures? I do, but we can look them another time. Right now I've got something else in mind. Oh, you do, huh? Like, what exactly? Sleep, I'm actually really tired. <laughs> Kissing you. You may have to stand behind Caitlin and press a gentle kiss against the back of her neck, your fingers intertwining with hers on the desk. Mizumi. Yes? Can I turn around and kiss you now? Say please! Mmm... I don't think so. Caitlin whirls around and grabs you by the wrist, her eyes dancing with mischief. It's my birthday. I make the rules. I could be okay with that. Your relationship with Caitlin will be affected. Your lips meet Caitlin's as she presses herself against you, walking you backward until your bed takes you out at the knees. You fall onto the sheets with Caitlin on top of you, her mouth moving to your neck and then down your chest. Wait! Caitlin pulls away and smiles down at you in a semi-darkness. Do you want me to stop? Mm, just a kiss, okay? Don't you dare stop. Caitlin leans down and brushes your shoulder with her lips, and pulls away again, smirking. Mmm. 
On second thought, maybe I'd rather watch another horror movie right now. Oh my god, you are such a brat. Name calling isn't gonna get you anywhere, you know that, right? I'm sorry. Now, will you keep kissing me? Hmm. Let me think. Caitlin. Okay, I'm done thinking. Caitlin pounces, kissing you all over. You bite your lip as her mouth strays down against your neck. Holy crap. You like when I kiss you there? Yes. Where should I kiss you next? Lower. Caitlin grins and gives you a playful kiss before rolling you over and unzipping the back of your dress. Hey! Oh, shush. I can't have this in the way if you want me to kiss you like that. Okay, but I don't like being the only one naked here. Would you feel more comfortable if I joined you? I might. What a surprise. Caitlin pulls her shirt over her head, musing up her hair in the process. You stifle a laugh as she kisses down your chest towards your legs. Oh my god. Are you ready? I... yes. Okay. Mm you and Caitlin spent the night together. <laughs> Later, you lie nestled against Caitlin's chest, letting the sound of her heartbeat lull you to sleep. Hey, Mizumi. Yeah? Was that... Was that your first time, you know, with a girl? Hmm. So this is where we actually get to tell her this. Hmm. Hmm. Damn, I wish I would I wish I would have played this before I did the Zig recap because as you can see, it took us almost a whole book to figure out whether what's your answer. Um, no it wasn't. With a girl, yes. Actually that was my first time period. Hmm. First time period, let's go with that. Let's see what she does. Really? Yes. Does that, you know, freak you out? No! Not at all, it's just that... That was my first time, too. Seriously? Caitlin nods, biting her lip. Wow. I'm glad it was with me. A bright smile breaks across Caitlin's face, and she pulls you into a tight hug. Me too, Mizumi. Me too. Caitlin releases you from her embrace and stares in your eyes, her fingertips drifting lazily over your wrist. Tell me something. When did you first know you liked me? Oh, um... Well, I definitely thought you were hot from, like, the moment I saw you. Yeah, I seem to recall that being one of the first things you said to me. It's the first thing that popped into my head. I'm not complaining. Anyway, I made a special effort not to look at you that way, since we were roommates, and then friends, and then... and then... And then, Becca dared me to kiss you, and everything changed. That's why I was kind of acting jealous at the sorority ball. You were so concerned about what Chris thought of you spending time with James. I guess you didn't know how it made me feel. I'm sorry, Caitlin. I just... 
I didn't know how you felt about me. And, to be honest, I thought there was something going on between you and Darren. <laughs> Actually, there was something going on there. He asked me why I seemed down, and I told him the whole story. Or at least I told him I was crushing on one of my friends. He just sat there and talked with me through the whole dance. Even though it was pretty obvious, I wasn't interested in him that way. That's really sweet of him. You're not regretting choosing me, are you? Caitlin props herself up on her elbow and leans down to kiss you. You feel the smile curving her lips as her mouth moves against yours. Mmm, don't be ridiculous. Keep calm and study hard! The next morning, you wake up and get dressed for the day. See, that is how diamond choices should be. I like it. Casual or fancy? Let's go with casual. <laughs> this is all we have. Yeah. Okay, so, for now, thankfully. Um, we've worn this outfit, I think, more times than I care to count. Let's go with something. I guess we'll finally choose this one. Why not? This outfit looks just right. Why not? We never wear it. Let's go with it. Later that afternoon, you head across campus to Professor Vasquez's office, a fresh 15 pages printed out and stuffed into your backpack. I hope that tyrant appreciates this. You throw open the door of the office and march in, brandishing the sheaf of papers. Here... Professor Vasquez looks up at everyone's laptop at your latest essay, lands on his desk. Hmm. <laughs> this had better be... Good. Don't worry, you'll be happy to learn that this weekend was pr plenty dramatic. I need a moment to process this word! <laughs> Skendefroid is the foundation of our culture. Mazumi, your attempt to shame me merely shame yourself. I... Uh, never mind. Talking to you is pointless. Just read the damn essay. Vasquez leans back in his chair and pours over your latest piece. Finally places it back on the desk and turns to look at you resting his chin on steepled fingers. Consider me overwhelmed. So you liked it? A wild night, secret passions revealed, and a brush with mor mortality... How could I not like it? Your outburst yesterday was unfortunate, but your work has more than made up for it. That said, if you ever try to interfere in my personal life again, no amount of youthful melodrama will stop me from firing you. Do you understand? I... <sighs> Justin James walks in, followed by a well-dressed and clearly wealthy couple. Is this a girl you wanted us to meet? Yeah, this is her. One of your classmates, darling? Actually, she's my fiance. What? <laughs> I remember this. It just led from one part to the next. Ah, yes. Well, Masumi, uh, I'm going to need a good 13 to uh, 30 pages on this next topic. You already know the subject. James, good day. Have a good day. And I'm leaving now. I bid you all adieu and farewell. Um, so I like diamond options like that. So if you watch my recap of uh, this week's stuff, I you see we had to go through a diamond option for a lot of choices that typically... <sighs> Wouldn't be things you would discuss with, like, friends or whatnot. So, yes, again, James is very flamboyant. He comes out, and he's just, Hey, I'm into guys and girls. We get it. But uh, hopefully people can move on. Because I, I feel like it's going to be something that, especially for those who are involved with Zig, is something that um, is going to be in the future, maybe something that's discussed, maybe it's even something that you know, do you want to put up with someone that's that's that bluntly honest or something? I, I don't know. Um, so yeah. Without any further ado, if you all did enjoy the video, please like and share. If you wish to follow me on social media, it's down in the description as well. If you also want to support my channel at all for the low cost of a cup of coffee, 
please do so. It's very appreciated. And until next video, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all in the next. Peace.